Hi, my name is Emily and I'm a part of the ACMW chapter at The Ohio State University. So today we're going to be talking to you about how you can start your own ACMW chapter by covering how we as an organization do everything from goal setting to event planning to finance. So first let's do some introductions. Again, I'm Emily and I'm a co-president of our chapter. I'm Courtney, I'm the other co-president of our chapter. I'm Mary Catherine, I'm the treasurer. I'm Nora, I'm the Socials and Workshops Chair, but I'm graduating in a week. <laughs> I'm Amy, I'm the current Community Outreach Coordinator and Incoming President. And I'm Vicki, and I am the current Campus Outreach Coordinator. And so, for some background, our organization was founded in 2003, and over the past 16 years has grown pretty steadily. At this point, we have nine people on our executive board, 75 active members, and we hold dozens of events throughout the year, ranging from tech talks to workshops to networking nights and socials and more. So what we're doing in this talk today is breaking down how we run our organization into nine key points. And whether you're starting your own ACMW chapter or just looking to grow an existing one, we hope that following along with these steps will help. So, first and foremost, you're going to want to set a mission statement for your organization. And that can sound really vague and flowery and something very inaccessible, but it doesn't have to be. A mission statement can be as simple as answering the question, why do you want to build this organization? Because it's going to be a lot of work to build a club, and you're going to ask yourself that quite a bit, as well as external parties are going to ask you. When you're recruiting, when you're building company relationships, they're all going to ask, what are you aiming to do with this organization? And that's where you need an answer such as, you want to build a community of women in tech at your university. You want to decrease the gender gap in computing, anything like that. And your mission statement can be revised later. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time, but you should have an idea of why you're doing this because that mission statement is going to inform every step after this. After you've gotten your mission together, you want to think about your goals. Do not do all of these at once. So you want to have two separate lists, one for dreams and one for tangibles. The first list will be all of your dreams. So bring Michelle Obama, Brenda Wilkerson maybe, and also you know reaching a thousand people for your chapter. The second list will be tangibles. So having two workshops a week, or maybe bringing in a company every semester, or just having a few members maybe to start. After that, you want to think of the three to five concrete goals from your tangibles list. After that, you're good to go. Choosing an exec board is an extremely important task because the exec board is like the heartbeat of the club. Um, currently, we have a bunch of positions, nine to be exact, and those include president, treasurer, secretary, events coordinator, media coordinator, um, out, two different outreach coordinators for campus and community, and those are just a sample of the things that we do. So you can really customize those to the needs of your club. Um, so for example, as you see your club grow, you can even introduce uh, new positions, such as a sponsorship coordinator that we're introducing next year to help grow our company sponsorships and funding that will allow us to send more students to Grace Hopper. So the exec board should be a reflection of where you want to see the club grow and um, what you also want to um, emphasize, or emphasize in your members. Um, so for example, uh, when you're picking new exec board members, you should try to pick people that um, have an, a lot of opportunity to um, really jump into their roles and grow. And so for example, if you have um, a more introverted person, but they'd really like to get more, or not more extroverted, but more practice with speaking with people, you could give them an outreach position if they show that they are really um, committed to uh, really contributing to the community. Um, so, or if you have a really uh, extroverted person or somebody who's good with interpersonal relationships, you could assign them to social media coordinator. So they're working with people and getting people really excited about the club. So basically what you want to think about is introducing positions that will both flourish the club and also flourish the members themselves. So now that you have your executive board, it's time to grow your community of members. And one of the best ways that you can do this is through events. So here at Ohio State, we like to hold a variety of events from things like a back to school social to tech talks with professors to workshops. And then particularly in the fall, we like to hold a lot of networking events with companies. So when you're planning events, you want to consider three main things. The first being your venue. So for example, when we hold an event with Google, we expect a lot more people to come. So you want to make sure that you book a larger room. But then for our weekly meetings, we expect less people. So we just have a smaller classroom that we meet at every week. 
On the same theme of consistency, we like to meet at the same time and day every week. So we hold our meetings Wednesdays at 7 p.m. in one of the computer science buildings because we found that by 7 p.m. in the evening, most people are done with their classes and because it's a weekday, people are on campus and they're still pretty involved and they're not busy with the weekend. Lastly, we like to also provide food at every single event that we hold because kids love to eat food. Well, students, I guess, we're not really kids. But students love to eat food, and so it's a good incentive for them to come. So some things you might want to ask yourself then are, how often do we want to meet? So maybe in the beginning, you only want to hold meetings monthly because you're just getting started out. And another good question that you want to ask is, what do you want your members to gain from the meetings? So do you want to have an emphasis on networking with companies, or do you want to focus more on providing workshops and tech talks for your members? Now that you have your events planned, the next step is recruitment and advertising. This step never really ends and you should continue to do this throughout the entire year that your club is in action. So we do, we recruit through a variety of means. We have flyers that we post all over Ohio State's computer science building. We pitch to classes, so this is where we go into those intro to computer science classes to talk to freshmen and people who are new to CS and bring them into our club. We also use word of mouth a lot, so that's talking about your club to people in your classes, planning events that are interesting enough that people will talk about them after the fact, um, and we also send out email blasts. This is done through a weekly newsletter that we send out every Sunday to let people know about our event that week and other events that are happening on campus. You also have access to the huge ACM and ACMW network to promote your org, utilize your professors, have them talk about it in their classes, have them post about it on your grading application. Um, but ultimately, you know your campus best, so do what works best for you. What we can recommend is a weekly newsletter and also sending out an event reminder every day of your event in case people forget. We use MailChimp for that, it's a great tool. And we also use Canva to make our flyers, and we recommend with flyers to find a cohesive brand and keep your posters consistent with either a logo or a color scheme or something in the background, then that way people can recognize your flyers and what you guys are doing. So when you first start off with your ACMW chapter, you may have absolutely no funding, and that is A-OK. -okay. You can totally maintain an ACMW chapter with zero funds. And so because it doesn't cost anything to get together or to hold talks, which is great. And then as you slowly grow, you may incur costs like providing food for meetings and maybe sending members to conferences and advertising costs. And so ways that you can get funding for these is to, one, build your relationships with companies. That is one of the most important things you can do. As you build those relationships, you can begin to ask them like, hey, could you maybe sponsor food for our meeting? And then as you build deeper and deeper relationships with them, you may be like, hey, could you maybe uh, make a donation towards our club so that we can continue to grow and and offer these wonderful services to our members. And then other areas of funding um, that we have found are state and local grants, and then also your own university. So you should reach out to your college and then your department within the college, and then also make sure to look at other outside sources of funding. For example, Ohio State, the undergraduate student government, they provide funds to clubs. All you have to do is give a presentation on what you'd use those funds for. And then also another area that we have found that has made donations to us is the Office of the Chief Information Officer and the Office of, of Diversity and Inclusion. So you just have to look around, you have to get creative, figure out where you can find those funds, and don't be afraid to ask. People get reached out to all the time to make donations, so it's not going to be anything new or outrageous out there. You just have to do it. Company partnerships are just as valuable to the company as they are to your organization, so it should be a mutually beneficial relationship that you try to foster throughout the years that your organization partners with the company. So for example, we hold a variety of tech talks and of other events such as networking events with companies throughout the semester. Um, we ask companies at a minimum to provide food for these events, which usually totals around $300, but can be slightly more or less depending on the um, catering you go with. For example, pizza is a lot cheaper than Chipotle. Um, as you grow your member base, it is totally fine to work with companies that you haven't worked with before and that first interaction have the company come in for free and not ask for a food sponsorship, um, just so that you can grow the familiarity and grow that relationship. But then as the years continue, you can definitely um, ask for uh, a food or catering um, uh, sponsorship or relationship. Um, and then also something you can do right now is to brainstorm three to four tech companies in your local area that you would like to see come in and work with your club. 
Uh, so for example, these can be direct tech co companies that you would immediately think of, say like Microsoft, Apple, Google, but you can also think of companies that um, may not uh, have a direct like computer science association in your mind, but have uh, deep connections to computer science through the work they do. So for example, insurance companies, um, they have very complex um, algorithms that they use to figure out the best prices and plans for their insurance. And you might not necessarily think right away that an insurance company um, would have really um, technical computer science, but that's something, at this modern age, every company has a computer science department or a computer science relationship. So that's something really important to consider. And finally, um, make sure you're reaching out to your members and seeing what companies they work for. Maybe they have a really great relationship with a company that you've never worked with or never even heard of, and then that's a great way to bring in a new company and keep relationships flourishing. So that's a little bit about company relationships. Another important component we like to focus on is community involvement. And we like to do this not only within our community, which is the greater Columbus area, but also on our campus as well. We've done this through a variety of events. For example, we've run an event called Code.io where we reach out to middle school students and teach them about computer science. Um, and this is where our members come in and volunteer and help them run through some workshops to learn more about it. We've also done events with things in our greater community, such as COSI, which is our local science museum, where we've had members go and volunteer and run science centers there to help teach kids about science. Ultimately, this is a great way for you to bond with your org, not only by giving back together, but also seeing each other outside of a school environment. The key to this is just to do research, so looking up opportunities and events that are out there on your campus, in the community, and if all else fails, plan one yourself. They're not that difficult, you just need to find the right resources. After you've thought about all the different events you would like to host and all the types of exec board members you would want on your board, you have to start thinking about sustainability. What can I do for my future leaders of my club to make sure that everything goes smoothly and keeps growing, gets, keeps getting stronger and bigger? So a th really good thing that we thought was good was transparency. So transparency, whether it's in your email, so we have an organizational Gmail that everyone can kind of look at emails from past history with companies or different organizations around Columbus. Um, also having a Google Drive has been really helpful. So having a history of all the different members we've had or the different events we've hosted in attendance, that's been very helpful. And also, all the busy work that you've noticed you've seen yourself doing, make sure you try to find a way to automate it or just to help others uh, figure out what to do in the future. So this is also more of a mindset. This isn't supposed to be an action item. So making sure you're, whatever you're doing is more sustainable, you're keeping good track of it, is also very good. So making sure that all your hard work that you've done um, during your time in the club is going to live on after you graduate. And that's about it. Those are our nine steps for building an ACMW chapter or growing an existing one. If you have any feedback or questions, feel free to email us. Thanks for watching.